Hello beautiful people, welcome back to another video. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about the concept of pre-flight. This is something that I wish I knew before starting any sprint. As a matter of fact, even until today when we start a design sprint, this is really what happens behind the scene before we start day one. It's so important, I can't stress enough how crucial it is. It is something that can make or break your sprint. In this specific episode, I want to talk about how to do this when you're running it remotely. We've been doing remote design sprints because you know what happens in 2020 and in 2020, now getting into 2021, it's becoming even more uh, typical for us to run design sprints or just any workshops remotely. So I'm going to share with you how to do it. Before we get into that though, if you've been watching our content, but you haven't subscribed yet, but you enjoy it, come on, let's do it. Subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And also hit that notification button so you know whenever it's, whenever we upload our videos, uh, our new videos up and uh, you'll get notified straight away. Let's get onto it. So I'm going to show you uh, our mural board. This is an example of a pre-flight artifact. It's important to have these specific information for you as a team member or as a facilitator, even more importantly, as a facilitator, for you to have your head around these information before starting day one. It will really hack the system and allow you to move forward faster um, and sprint towards day one, two, three, up to day five. So this is pre-flight artifacts, as we call it. There are three things here to cover. The first one is the challenge. So I'm gonna zoom into that. The challenge is really just a simple statement, almost like a goal, but not necessarily your goal just yet. Uh, but it's something that the team identifies or the business identifies as the particular challenge that you want to do or focus in. Uh, so the formula to this is to write down what um, is this product meant to do. So for example, to create a digital platform for independent artists and designers that covers the user persona very broadly at this point. Uh, to uniquely showcase their work so that they can create awareness around their brand and ultimately be able to convert sales through their network of followings. And then I've added another extra information there. That's a bonus. You don't really need to have this, but if you have it, it is a bonus with the aim to launch phase one by when. So in this case, I've just said the end of this financial year. So that's what a challenge is. Um, it's something to dwell on. Uh, I'd leave like a week before the sprint to for you to start formulating these artifacts. Just write a challenge. Again, similar to a sprint, don't overthink it. Come up with the broad level idea of what the challenge is and just write it down. Just by writing it down, that will make people think, but you don't need to actually finalize it there and then. The next thing is the proto persona. Remember I spoke about user personas in the previous episodes. This is focusing on one key persona and that's why we call it the proto persona because this is the persona that we're going to create a prototype for. This is the persona that we're going to recruit during our um, design sprint process, our user testing process. Um, so in here, my example says Rebecca, I've given her a name, Rebecca, is a budding fashion and lifestyle designer in her 20s, aspiring to establish her own brand and collection. So that gives us, hopefully, some level of empathy towards Rebecca and people like Rebecca. The key things that we want to document here are behavior, facts, problems, and needs. So I'll give you some examples of behaviors. So people like Rebecca uh, likes to focus on her craft. They are introverted aware of cultural trends, easygoing and friendly, spends most of her time researching. She is a self-confessed fashion geek. Um, now, these are assumptions, but there are companies who have, you know, the luxury of data and know exactly who their users are or their segments are. They can be, ba they can write this based on the data. But if you don't have it, and most startups won't, most people won't, as a matter of fact, um, go with your gut feel, try and understand your user, and then just write it down. Some facts. Has a part-time office job, has a small group of like-minded creators, enjoys going to art exhibitions, aspires to go global, etc., etc. I'm gonna go into her problems. Unsure about how to start, no budget to create own shop and website, not an expert in marketing, neither is an expert in, in technology. Uh, and she's got a couple of other problems that I'll skip for now. 
the most important thing, if there is one thing here, is to understand, really understand what Rebecca's needs are. Rebecca needs more exposure for her brand. Uh, she needs to spend time on customers and products and less on infrastructure. Technology platform, simple enough to pick up for her, being a small sole operator, perhaps. Uh, integrated uh, op operational systems. So she needs the, these type of solutions. You get the idea. By doing all of this, um, you will build an empathy towards Rebecca. Now, this is not necessarily an empathy map, uh, and I won't even get into what an empathy map is. You can do some research around that, but this will somewhat give you a level of empathy. You can do this with your teams. You can do it yourself. If you do it with a team, just do some affinity mapping where you group the behaviors, facts, problems, needs. Um, the next thing is having some sort of a user experience map or a customer experience map. Again, at Relab, we've worked with large corporations who's got this handy or has done this type of exercises before. Even a full-on customer experience map with the feelings, uh, the touch points, the, uh, the, all of those other analysis that comes with a typical customer experience map. Now, in this situation, the most important thing to have is just the stages of the journey. Don't worry too much about the feelings. Don't worry too much about the touch points. Don't worry too much about the rest of the other SWOT metrics that they may have. For now, focus on the actions that the users try to go through in their experience with the brand or the product. In this example, Rebecca, who is our proto persona, would have done some research, consideration, evaluation, purchase, post-purchase actions. Now, some actions I'll just read out real quick. During her research, she was searching in Google or YouTube. She's reading blogs and websites, asking friends, colleagues, and family, sending inquiries to digital agent agencies. Could you, the, could you do this e-commerce website for me or whatever it is? Um, those are the things that Rebecca and people like Rebecca might be doing during the research phase. There's the consideration phase, which is um, watching YouTube reviews about the product. Now, she's being a little bit more specific than she was during the research. She's reading review sites about the product. She's inquiring about the product. So sending an email chat, asking this and that basically. Evaluation is her signing up on a trial account, testing the product and the features, trying to get a feel whether it's right for her and her business or not, and so on and so forth. Um, during the purchase stage, it's a little bit more cold and transactional, but it is what generally is like during the purchase stage, which is comparing payment options. Is this, am I going for like a month to month plan? Am I going for a full one year payment, annual payment? Um, and the next thing is signing up to a paid account. And uh, the last stage that I've written here is post-purchase. So requesting for technical support. What are the things that Rebecca is doing after she decided to purchase the product? Uh, she might be requesting for account-related support or inquiries about third-party integrations or even trying to scale up or scale down her plan depending on her needs. So that will give you an idea of a user experience map or a customer experience map at the most uh, basic level just trying to understand a customer experience throughout their journey. And if you have these three things here, which are the challenge, the persona, the user experience map, and document them together like this as what we call the pre-flight artifacts, then I would say you're actually in a good place to start your design sprint day one. Um, you could do more than this, obviously, but there's always more time for you to do more. I would say stop there. Um, do these three things and um, your design sprint process from day one and so forth would be guided by this. Um, and if everyone in the team gets themselves familiar, familiarized with, with these information, then oftentimes everyone's sort of starting to be aligned. Their minds are starting to be aligned and their thinking are starting to be aligned because they understand what the challenge is to focus on. They understand who they're focusing on in terms of user persona, and they know which what journey this user is going through. That saves you heaps, heaps of time. All right, that's it for this video. Um, if you enjoy this content, make sure you like, comment, share it with your friends, spread the love. Thank you.